Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So this one is going to be against Cat 2007. So um, this is still last week's um, games. So let's get to it. Uh, D4, E6. So I am inviting Cat to play the French again. And she does. So I play B6. Going back into my good old Owen's defense. Knight f3, bishop, bring out the bishop, bringing out the bishop, now threatening takes, and takes, because the king is pinned, or the knight is pinned, right? The king is here, and so the bishop can take e4 right away. Bishop d3, knight f6, bishop to g5, now... So many people have played this against me, right? And the idea is that after h6, if bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, right? The queen gets activity, and black gets the bishop pair. However, if bishop h4 happens, I get to play g5. And after bishop g3, knight takes e4. And some of you might be like, well, what happens if bishop takes e4? Well, I'll just take back, and you can't take back because, well, I'm keeping your knight pinned. So pinned guys do not move, right? It's like you're in a fight, and somebody has pinned you down. You can't move. That's exactly what's happening here. So after knight takes e4... Our friend Cat2007 just castled, and this is a very smart decision. I played bishop takes c3 because I said I like my knight, right? It's very dominant in the center. And then I played knight takes g3, and I do definitely regret this decision because I traded my knight for something that actually wasn't as valuable as I thought. Right? If you look at this bishop right now, it only can move to one square without being attacked. So if I just played d6, I would have been fine. Right, My knight would have been way more powerful than this bishop. So, to be honest, I could have, well, backing up at this moment, I could have also played knight takes c3. But it was, it was hard to say really which one was a better capture. But clearly, this knight takes g3 decision was horrible intellect on my part. I fell victim to my own decision making, right? Remember how I told you so many times, I was like, only trade when you can justify it? Well, I traded this thinking that this bishop was really powerful. And to be honest, the power only comes from this diagonal. So all I had to do was play d6, and I would have been like, you know, I didn't have to take on g3. So I took on g3. This was a horrible decision. F takes g3. Wonderful capture, right? Opening up this direct attack on f7, right? The queen to h5 might be coming in. So I played d6. And here queen to e2 was played. Um... So after the game, I remember I looked at the engine, and I, the engine suggested the move d5. and I never really understood why this move was good, but I sort of felt like this was a, a way to get white's pieces improved. Bishop takes d5, knight d4. And the reason why this is so powerful is if you move the bishop back, Right? White could even take on e6 and play queen to h5, right? So there is this attack going on. Meanwhile, you know, black has to still develop pieces, and then after c4, bishop b7, knight takes e6, right? Always thinking about that queen h5 threat. So it's just so dangerous for black right now that. Even sacrificing a pawn that white sacrifices, anything is worth the attack. So hard to spot, but a brilliancy. 
So queen d2 happened. I played knight to d7. And at this moment, I was starting to get together my game plan. Queen to e7, castles, maybe swing my rook over. So after rook d1, queen to e7, I castled. And here I played e5. And to be honest, I, I, I sort of remember thinking, you know, do I really want to play e5 and allow this bishop to come to f5? Right? Do I want to provoke our friend, cat2007, playing d5? So I thought about those moves, and I was like, let's do it anyway, because I feel like, you know, when we're looking at this position, f7 is a very clear weakness, right? If the queen looks like this, and I have to defend like this, it's going to look very silly. But if I play e5, and if I play f6, well, maybe I could talk about it in a different way. But my judgment wasn't so great there either. d5, king b8. What I'm saying is, if you come here, I'm not going to let you take this knight, right? Previously, it used to be pinned, but now I can free my knight to c5. And that's my goal, right? To de develop my knight to a better square and try to improve my position. So in the game, knight to b3 happened. I played h5 because if you look at this position, I am i don't really have an attack going yet. Right, and I sort of need I sort of have to think about, okay, well, this F seven pawn is clearly a weakness. So I need to be able to just um try to figure things out my way. So I played H five and I looked for adventure because clearly I was like, well, I'm not doing anything on this side. Uh so I played H five. And this was also fulfilling in terms of, you know, the queen can no longer come to h5. So after a4, I said, okay, you want to play a5? I'm just going to shut you down. Rook f2, f6. So now I've established this foundation. And what's so promising about this eight f6 pawn is that the knight on d7 is covering it. So at this point in time, the knight is a defensive piece. But at the same time, if I need it to be an offensive piece, I can make it an offensive piece. Bishop to f5, I'm going to go knight to f8. Now you might be saying, well, didn't you say about 20 seconds ago it was going to be an offensive piece? And I'm still going to tell you yes. Now you might look at this position and say, well, where's this knight going, right? There's no future here or there. It's just going to take and take. There's no future, right? But after knight c1, I sort of thought about it in an interesting way. But I was like, what if white plays knight d4, right? And brings the knight to e6. And I think this might have been a missed opportunity for cat to activate the knight to a really good square. Because in this position, I cannot go bishop c8 to trade the bishops because there's a fork. I can play h4, I can play queen to e8 and target a4. I can play rook h6, but then again, these two are vulnerable to a fork on f5. So I don't know what I want to do. But after knight c1, I was set on what I wanted to do. So number one, I wanted to get rid of the bishop on c on f5. And my goal was to, you know, after trade, king takes, I want to get my knight to d7 and to c5. I want to activate some squares, right? So after knight a2, I thought this was interesting, but I took anyways. Knight d7, knight c5, and rook h6. So... The f6 pawn forever will be defensive, right? It will solely be the guy who holds the two rocks together. But what did I intend, right? Queen f2, I played rook f8. Now, I could have also looked for much active options, but I said I 
sort of seem like, you know, this rook on f8 temporarily, it should be okay. But what I missed here is I forgot that our friend Cat2007 can play rook takes g5. That I missed, and thank goodness Cat didn't find it. King h1. So now I played queen to d7. I said, if you take on g5, I'm going to play, well, I could uh, take on a4, right, for 1. I could play something on the, the king side. I don't know. Maybe. But I said, I want to play queen d7. I want to make it look like that this a4 pawn is extremely important. So after rook a1, I played g4. And now this cements the foundation for the move h4. Because if I play h4 first, well, there's g4. And if h3, g3. And nothing is going to happen. Right? So I have to play g4 first. That way h4 can have its own effect. Rook a2 and now h4. And my goal is now rook takes h4. Because... If you play queen takes h4, I'm going to play queen takes f5. Threaten back rank mate. And at the same time, you know, if the queen needs to go back, I'm just going to play rook h8. And I'm going to, I'm going to hunt down the files, and I'm going to try the best I can. So that's my goal, right? So after rook takes f6, which is another alternate version, I play take, take, and now the killer move, what I love, about the game sometimes queen to h7 and this is beauty because there is no way to defend this h2 pawn the queen cannot come back to f4 because pawn takes so after king g1 rook takes king f2 and now i could have played queen h3 right but instead i played rook to h5 i wanted to swing it over to f5 so after queen d8, king b7, knight to b5, looking very scary, right, on the c7 pawn. Luckily, I got my queen there. I played queen to f5. I was looking for our friend to see if our friend cat2007 could find precise moves. I feel like king g1 is the only good option here. Um, maybe I can play knight to a6. I don't know. But I could also play queen to h7 still. Um, it's hard to say. But regardless, black has all the initiative in this position still. right? The king is open. This king is closed, but it's somewhat surrounded. right? And so after king d2, I said, let's check and see where that goes. Check and checkmate. So, what was there to learn from this game? Well, I think the opening was fine, other than bishop h4, because I was able to win that pawn. And I am going to criticize myself for making this decision knight takes bishop again, because my knight was clearly better than cat 2007's bishop. And then d6, and I became stable. I was stabilizing. Right, I was doing my thing, and then knight f8. This was like the start of a strategy, but the start of a turning point. So after knight c1, bishop c8, and you could see that my game eased up a little bit here. Right, I wasn't too focused on getting our opponent's pawns or trying to outplay them. I was trying to sort of find ways to improve my own position. I was trying to do what's best for what I could do. So after queen d7, rook a1, I played g4, h4, and the purpose was to get through on the king side. Eventually I did, but it was difficult, just like any other game. So just want to let you know that I am somewhat easy to beat for some people, but I am somewhat hard to beat for some people. So um, it's all about your personal style. It's all about how you do, how your curiosity matches up. And with that, I'll see you next time.